in Sri Lankapusmanjali. The heart of this maidservant constantly burns in a great conflagration or a great forest fire where the fires are coming on all sides and the very next moment I'll be burned to ashes. A great fire of separation. Being thus afflicted and crying out loud, I lament to you in the following verses. So Srila Gurudev is explaining that Srila Raghunath Daswa Swami is in what's called Avesh, that is full absorption with her uh, maid servants. So Srila Gurudev is explaining that unless this Avesh comes for your Gurudev, don't expect that it will ever come for Srimati Radhika. This Avesh in the Gopis, that much that's in the Gopis, that they were so absorbed when Krishna left the Rasa dance. So I am Krishna. Just see how I'm sweetly playing my flute. She's Putana, and I am Krishna. Watch how I kill her. That same of in great uh, trepidation, hesitation, and doubt was telling Gurudev, but this relationship with Guru, this Avesh, and this Ramba Bhav, or serving Sri Guru in such intimacy, is such a rare thing. How is it possible? So Sri Gurudev replied, certainly it's a rare thing, but that's the only thing that we want. And without that, we cannot enter into Radha There are two ways to feel separation from your Gurudev. Shilagurde was telling my God brothers. One is, if you think, he is so great, he is on such and such a high stage, and I am so low. That's one stage of separation. But in that stage, we cannot weep with our heart over at the lotus feet of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. And also, serving his uh, internal manavisya, serving his mood, of service to visit the day that is actually rendering bhajan, uh, engaging in bhajan and entering into the prayers that we sing, the prayers in our songbook, the prayers of Stavavali, Stavamala, uh, particularly Vilapakusmanjali. That is, these two things together constitute this bhamba seva, or this bhamba bhav, intimate seva. And then, thinking that he is so near and dear to me, he loves me so much, this kind of separation produces that kind of weeping that ultimately leads, by his mercy, to be able to weep in separation for the service of Shumati Radhika. What kind of feeling for separation? Like Shula Raghunathas Goswami. Sunyaya te mahagostam karindro jagaraya te vyagra tundaya te kundam jiva tu rahitas yame that he sprang his spiritual master, Shalarupa Goswami, that now that I've lost my dear friend, Shalarupa Goswami, all of grudge has become just like a desolate desert, and Govardhan Hill has become just like the gaping mouth of a python, and Radhakund has become just like the gaping mouth of a tigress coming to swallow me up. In other words, I can't live without them. When that feeling of separation comes from Guru, then we can advance in our bhajan, Shri Gurudev was explaining. He said, but now, even on the disappearance day of your birthday, although he's entered so many years ago into Upper Kadlila, you're feeling your days very pleasantly. Then on rare days, like his Abhirbhakti, when you're making arrangements for him, still the arrangements are so elaborate, and you're thinking of the puja and greeting guests. 
no tears come. Then maybe at the time of speaking, a tear may come and it may not come. And if the festival is very elaborate, then no tears come. So what to do? Just as we have so many songs praying to enter, to be free from all the anarchists that make us cry for our material things, the Pashanam wasn't good enough, my husband just left me, so-and-so just insulted me, nobody appreciated me after my class or tear time. Instead of crying for these things, uh, we have our songbook to make us long for those moves of our previous acharyas. Similarly, by the very same songs, we can pray for that mood of separation from our Gurudev, which will ultimately give us separation for our Isidiv. Then, I just wanted to share, um, because Shula Gurudev is speaking lately from Madhuri Kudambani, on the nature of the transcendental body. Uh, before I even pay my pronouns, uh, just a quick comment. Um, if you do the maths, there's 45 proper disciples, and if we each speak for 45 minutes, that means that we need about 20 hours. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep it very brief. It's always difficult to speak on a day like this. Um, but I'm going to talk to you uh, in brief about uh, a little bit about the past and a little bit about the future. And maybe a little bit about how to invest your wealth uh, successfully. Seems incongruous. Shiva Prabhupada came to the West because, like all of our acharyas, he is a, a great revolutionary. You can say all of our acharyas are all heart revolutionaries because they are so big hearted and so compassionate to the living entities. They undertake great hardships and uh, great pains. Uh, to find us out, to come and share uh, the joy and the bliss of what it means to be a devotee with us. And uh, I'm sure other speakers will talk about the details of the hardships that Srila Prabhupada endured. Uh, so I'll move on by summing it up and saying that, in a sense, uh, we were all living in a type of hell. Uh, most of us had no idea of what real spiritual life was, although we were hankering for that. And Srila Prabhupada came and brought us to paradise. Here we are in paradise, associating with other Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis under the guise of Srila Gurudev. So, in one way, we won the lottery. Yeah, we. Just imagine that you're a poor man and you have nothing, and then all of a sudden, millions and millions and millions of dollars or crores of rupees drop on you, and your life changes completely. The problem was that we were very small. We were like little babies. We were children. We didn't even really truly understand who our Gurudev is or what his mission truly was, although we were very vigorous in trying to serve him, we did the best that we could. But uh, as the days approached uh, to his departure from this uh, illusory world, uh, we all began to, not all of us, but some of us, uh, began to position ourselves territorially. A little bit this is mine, a little bit that is mine. And on the day of his departure, practically not long after, uh, the whole world had been divvied up. Uh, you can have that part, I'll have that part. And uh, this sense of 
ownership, this sense of false proprietorship, which is intrinsic to the jiva in its conditioned state of mind, overtook us all. Uh, that condition, of course, is the naivatika condition of the jiva. We have a tendency to, as uh, you could say, the lowest common denominator in, in the spiritual realm. Jiva is very, very small. Everything, uh, we're the smallest, we're the lowest on, on the pecking order. Everything goes up from the jiva. Everything is much more exalted and much more wondrous than we are. And so we can fall victim to wanting to usurp the opulences of the absolute. Wealth, strength, fame, beauty, knowledge, and renunciation. And interestingly, what we found is like all pure devotees, when they come, there's a, a kind of an entourage. There's a, in their wake is a, an amazing amount of opulence and wondrous events that, that take place and that come with them. And with our Guru Dave, uh, as Tirith Maharaj said this morning, so much wealth was created, so much land came. Of course, the devotees worked very, very hard for that. And with his departure, we misunderstood that, oh, uh, this is mine. And we began a process of self-justification. I'm going to serve Krishna so wonderfully, and I know that I can manage this material facility very, very well. So let me do it with the best of intentions. But as everyone knows, the road to hell is paid with the best of intentions. And you know, so we, the, the greatest genocides in history, all the way down to the, the smallest domestic squabbles, we're all justifying that whatever we're doing to ourselves, and that's part of Maya's trick with us. Yes, it's okay that you do this. Yes, it's okay that you hurt other living entities. Yes, it's okay that you transgress the laws of nature because you need it. So in that way, we lost all of the lottery. All of the wealth that we had been given, we squandered. And what is that wealth? That wealth is actually not money, it's not buildings, it's not properties. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada is famous for saying that he would get rid of all the temples, sell all the bricks, if we could focus on that one thing, which is bhakti. And there's one way that we can calibrate, that we can assess where we stand in our bhakti, and at least in my humble opinion, that is in how we're treating each other, our relationships. Do we care about each other more than money? Do we care about each other more than bricks? Do we care about each other more than various material things? Because when we all go, uh, at any day now, at any moment now, and stand in the court of the Lord of Death, the only real wealth that we'll have with us are the sweet dealings and the service that we render the Vaishnavas. That will be our real wealth. And Yamaraj will look at us and bless us for that. And those that we leave behind, they will know how much of a devotee or how little of a devotee we are by all the good works and all the sweet dealings and all the care and compassion we offer to each other. This is why we celebrate our acharyas. This is why we celebrate our Guru Maharaj. Because he has such a big heart. He was a revolutionary and all hearts revolutionary. So, I'm saying all of this because despite the fact that we squandered our first wave, somehow or other we won the lottery a second time. And we're now going to be the day. And once again we're in paradise. Only this time we're a little bit deeper in. We know what paradise is really about now. But we still have to be vigilant. Because as Jiva souls, we're still conditioned, we're on the path of bhakti, we're getting mercy and abundance by Shiva Gurudev and all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. 
But we're still prone to this false pollution concept. I'm so important. I can control things in such a way that it's going to help you and benefit you. Such a false notion. And in that notion is the seed of corruption that overtook my grace movement. And if you look at history, it's that same seed of corruption that destroys all the things that saints come and want to give us. It's easy to put on the dress of a sadhu. All you have to do is look at me and you see what I mean. But it's another thing to actually live it. It's another thing to be it and to walk it. It's another thing to make the hard decisions that we have to make. We're confronted with these funny things that Maya throws at us. Choose for truth or choose for lie. Choose for service or choose for me. You and me, all of you know what I'm talking about, all these subtle things that we encounter every day. So we need to reflect on ourselves. How much are we trying to follow the footsteps of our Guru Maharaj? How much are we trying to adhere to the path that's been set by Gurudev and the other Acharyas? And if we honestly reflect on ourselves, uh, then we don't run the risk of squandering the second lottery win. And I think that the byword for the future for all of us is to, in the mood of the day, love and respect each other, help each other, because Krishna consciousness is all about relationships. The very first step in understanding anything about Krishna is samatha. What is our relationship? What is our relationship with Guru? And what is our relationship with the Vaishnavas? And if we can't get our relationships right here, how is it that we can go to the spiritual world and have a relationship there? If I'm not understanding the philosophy and there are many senior Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis here who understand it better than I do, please correct me. But I understand that what we have here is a playing ground, a practice field. By serving Guru and Vaishnavas, we perfect ourselves, we purify ourselves, we create our wealth. And so when we come to the court of Lord and Death, we can look and we can be humble and we can say, yes, I was lucky. The second time around, I didn't squander the wealth that the Vaishnavas gave.
uh, there was a king, a prince, a queen, and a uh, palace with a beautiful garden and some near facilities. The king for himself brought a uh, herd of very beautiful thoroughbred horses. For his son, because there were no other siblings and he was a uh, royalty, there were no playmates, so he uh, found a group of monkeys for him to play with. And for his wife, he got a flock of sheep. A flock of sheep. That they wool, sheep, understand? So one day, uh, the oldest monkey uh, went to all the other monkeys and said, uh, We have to leave here immediately. We're in grave danger. And the other monkey said, What is the problem? We have such nice facility here. There are so many wonderful trees. There are bananas. Uh, the king's son loves us. We play with him every day. The monkey said, No, no, I've had a vision. We're in great danger. We must leave immediately. I've had a dream that one day, one of the sheep that belongs to the queen will go into the kitchen. And he'll stick his nose in the pot of one of the preparations being prepared for the king's lunch. And the cook will become angry with him and throw a burning ember of wood at the sheep. His wool will catch on fire. He'll run into the barn and roll into the hay and try to put the fire out. And uh, unfortunately, the hay will catch on fire and all the horses will be terribly burned. Well, the other one said, well, What is the problem? Why does that put us in danger? When the king consults the veterinarian physician, he will tell the king that there's only one cure for the burns of these horses, monkey fat. We are in rare danger, we must leave immediately. The monkeys, they were uh, not impressed by the dream of the, the oldest monkey, and they refused to leave. He left, and lo and behold, what happened? One day, the sheep went into the kitchen, put his nose into the pot, got hit with the burning ember, rolled in the hay, and they soon all became fat. What is the purport? <clears throat> the older monkey was a, a stage of realization of the new guru who leaves the beautiful garden Little uh, trees and the bananas by the institution left by the family of charge. So anyone who stays attached to the external manifestation that the charges leave, but forgets to become uh, absorbed in the substance of what he thought, will become monkey fat. Therefore, we should understand that. Yeah. The real thing that Sri Prabhupada was trying to give us was Krishna Prem. Namaha Padanaya Krishna Prem, Kadaraya Krishna, Krishna Chaitanya, Namaha Gora to say Namaha. And uh, <clears throat> what he taught us was the importance of uh, associating with single persons. In, in 1974 or so, I remember he invited all of us in Los Angeles after a play. He said, I personally invite you all to come to Vrindavan and Mayapur every year. Of course, some of the people present in one of those didn't go, but here probably invited everyone. Sanctioned from the leading authority in the institution. But everyone is freely invited to come every year. Because we're not actually capable uh, of doing the 
And we've gone through the process of this. We hear this from Yasin speaking. And uh, some years ago, we used to hear Guru Dave speaking. You know, and this is helped us better. He was younger. He actually went to all the locations. Sure, he's coming out right also. But um, one year at the uh, other day, I think he carried over the last part of the road. But I remember. And I was fortunate enough to have heard from some of those curriculums. Even in the year of. Uh, one of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's first disciples, who uh, used to live in Bodrum, did all Babaji Mahara. Guru Dev wouldn't use his Babaji name, he was calling his Brahmacharya name, but he came also. And uh, we were curving around by Radha, on the road to Radha Kuna, and there was a huge puddle of water up to your knees. And at that point, my first trip to India, I was still trying to wear socks. My Western is I'm not walking through that. And Ramesh came by with a jeep. And uh, I jumped in the back and said, Is it all right? He said, Yes. And three minutes later, we were there at the front seat. I said, I can't even write this. And this is a senior disciple of Bhakti Santa Sarasvati, who lived uh, for many years at, uh, in my part, the room, taking on the night of the and maintaining the uh, very large. Uh, Work it out our duties here under Pakistan's direct order. We're discussing in Hindi about the party. And I don't know what been like when it was done in the past. I got this one time every day, was responding. Uh, most likely, what it was like as he did in the Chilabaki presentation of our. It was very wonderful to hear them see their conversation and discussion. And it made me realize that it's actually only the self-realized soul who's really doing the curriculum. We're under his guidance, but it's actually his realization and his, uh, his maturity and budget uh, that can reveal to us uh, the actual reality of the different places that we're going. Often we're fatigued or the buses are dusty and we have uh, so many external uh, you know, problems through this. But in that case, if we actually see the places we're going, we would be in such houses that we wouldn't want to leave for a second. We, we wouldn't let them drag us out of these locations. We would want to stay forever. <clears throat> but we're only sadhakas. We're um, all neophytes. Uh, while some of our governors think they're full professors, actually we're all just beginning to be in school. The one thing that we can learn in the association of someone of exalted question of character and realization like the gift that was given to us by his divine grace, should I sit back with the Swami Prabhupada, by introducing us to this body of family. Actually, uh, we are all one thing. There are many different visions that sprouted from the uh, Problems that arose in Bhakti Siddhanta's mission. If you read in the Chaitanya 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 Mita, how you know chapter 12, that's 8 through 11, Robert, it gives a summary of it. He says, when Bhakti Siddhanta says, right, that there was a Bible in the planet, he said, all the Kaprahas were cooperative. He said, and then after he left, then uh, two factions arose. And they both uh, disregarded his instruction and elected, decided to elect the majority. He said, a third group followed the instructions of Dr. Sandra Sarasota that was strict. So amongst those third group was Swami Gadolid, or Shri Bhakti Pranayesh Maharaj, Shri Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami, Shri Bhakti Pranayesh Maharaj, Shri Bhakti Pranayesh Maharaj, Shri Bhakti Pranayesh Maharaj. But there were many of Dr. Sandra's disciples who decided that rather than fight over who was going to control the assets that would go the admission, they went and opened their own missions. And even uh, Prabhupada was one of the founders of Bodhi Vedanta Sabhita. They had the initial meeting. And uh, the Vishnu Maharaj, one other guy brother, who then uh, separated them. <clears throat> so the real disciples of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati, of course, they understood that the substance of Bhakti Siddhanta's body was more important than the form of the exposition that he led. Bhakti Dhamma Bhakti writes very clearly, Bhakti Sangha says, writes very clearly in his essay, Organized Religion, 
that uh, when the Acharya establishes his preaching mission, uh, he doesn't have any intention except to present the absolute truth. But unfortunately, after his departure, Prabhupada uh, explains this in the fourth minute of the Shrimad Bhagavad, there are uh, <coughs> many persons who then enter that mission and preach out of the It's like when Krishna appears, he died, he died, he died, he died, he appears every day of Brahma to be established with this principle. After he departs, uh, then there's some chaos and confusion and misunderstanding. So this is a natural course of events after the departure of a greater charge of life as a migration of this development to so many problems. Similarly, in building the Nathas of Hiti, so many of Bhana Maharaj's disciples so uh, clearly realized in their understanding of Guru Tattva, I was extremely impressed by the presentation yesterday. How they understand this principle of Sadhu Sangha and this principle of disciple succession and then uh, oneness of Guru Diksha and Shikshu. In 1936, Prabhupada spoke before the Bombay members of the Bombay Kodi and Bhakti. He said, We are not gathered here tonight because I'm about to start this Mahotsa. So we're not gathered here tonight uh, to celebrate the uh, uh, leader of a sectarian institution, but to glorify your God Guru. So that Guru is one. Bhakti Yanakam Siguru Deva Vigisha, he quoted that slogan. He said, one who has uh, uh, surrendered to the bonafide spiritual master, he can understand the purport of all the Vedic literatures. He can understand that conclusion. He said, there's no question of there being two. He said, the Guru is one, simply manifest in many different forms. There's no question of uh, there being two. He said, some are going to follow him. So we're all very, very fortunate uh, to have met someone like Shilabhati Kanti Narayanar, who understands the non-eastern of Shilabhati Samana Sarasarata Kapos, Moon and Nishan. Shilabhati, he also understood that mission. He was given instruction uh, within his heart by a uh, group of Swami and Bhakti Samana Sarasarata Kapos manifested as Pushpa Samadhi and Pergara Bharadamadar and instructed to go to the West. One of my dear friends and uh, someone that brought up in the early issue is the main issue of Bhakti Volunteer tomorrow. He told us a story about what happened right before Prabhupada left. And, uh, uh, Prabhupada went to visit the Ethanada tomorrow and uh, his mood had changed. He decided to go west and he'd been sitting in the Dublin and Rodman and Temple to this project for so much time. And then he told them when he to get a steamship ticket and go to the and they were shocked at the whole week. Why did he want to go? And he explained to them that he had this realization that Pakistan and Sarasvat Kapoor had instructed him and the Purpose has inspired him. <coughs> and then he was volunteered in Russia as not only the secretary, but was his service to escort Prabhupada to the gate. So he took him to the gate. Prabhupada said, Why don't you come with me? He was always trying to recruit the best man. Similarly, he brought to Srila Gurudev, why don't you come to New York? So, but also Gurudev had the same uh, circumstance, he had so much service to his group, uh, and uh, the Mahatma that he couldn't leave. And of course, they came later, three years later, to fulfill that, uh, <coughs> that uh, their engaging the song and bringing us here and giving us a clearer understanding of who the Gaudiya charges are. We can't possibly perceive what Manjali God is all about in our present conditioned state. But they're giving us some hint, some idea, some glimpse of the absolute reality of who uh, the Guru Parampara we are trying to serve actually are. And for that, we're eternally grateful. Very, very uh, fortunate, and uh, I'm a very uh, lucky person to be able 